Hello and welcome. So far in this playlist we've been discussing absolute humidity and we just covered relative humidity and the next state uh, parameter or property of moist air that we're going to discuss is the dew point temperature which is something most people have a general understanding of in day-to-day -day life. And here we want to des describe it in a little more detail. So let's just imagine we have a box of air. And this air is right now at some given temperature and it has some amount of moisture. And remember this omega term, the absolute humidity ratio is a very good measure of an absolute sense how much of the air is water vapor. And again, remember these values were on the order, and this is the mass of the vapor over the mass of the dry air, everything that's not vapor, so H, uh, nitrogen and oxygen and all the other CO2, methane, everything else that could possibly be in the air at that moment. And this, this ratio is going to be on the order of 0.01. So 1% of the mass is water vapor. And thus far we talked about the parameter relative humidity, which is from 0 to 100%, which is how close are we to being saturated. At higher and higher temperatures, the air can hold more and more moisture, which we've seen in experiments in, in day to day life. And this is a measure of how close we are. Now, a, f a follow up question you could ask is to say, okay, I'm at this given state, and let's say I just threw a very, very cold rock in the center of this room. And this cold rock is going to take this temperature and it's going to bring it down. But, and we're not taking any of these water particles out. Okay, so the amount of moisture in the air is not changing. This is a, this is a rigid box. Nothing, nothing escapes. At what point we know that we can only hold so much moisture at a given temperature. When we keep lowering, lowering this temperature, at what point does this go to 100%? And that temperature that that eventually reaches 100%, that is the dew point temperature. And why do we call it the dew point? Because, well, you get dew or condensation or water forming on objects when this happens. So what you've noticed is that if this is very, very cold, Eventually, the air that's right around this object is at a low enough temperature that it can't hold any more moisture, and you start getting droplets on the surface. And you see this. If you go out in the grass in the morning, you'll see this. Your car may have water in the morning, and that's because, let's, well, let's draw it out. During the day, this is my poor artistic ability coming through. The sun is shining and things are hot and there's a certain amount of water in the air, water vapor. And then at night, the sun goes away. So sun goes away and you're staring into the black sky and it gets very, very cold. And this, this temperature keeps dropping, but this doesn't change much. And eventually this temperature keeps dropping lower and lower and lower until your car starts to get water vapor. Well, not wa liquid water, condensation forming. And that's really the concept of the dew point temperature. We are, there's, it's the temperature at which if you didn't change your humidity level and you solely just did sensible cooling or cooling that only affected the temperature. That is the temperature that 
you would start to see condensation or that that relative humidity goes to 100%. And so another key concept that I would like to, to get across is that the dew point temperature is very linearly related to the absolute humidity ratio. So if this, if your current humidity ratio goes up, that dew point temperature goes up. And, and so there's a direct correlation between these two. You could almost say that the dew point temperature is a function of your current humidity levels. And the same way, you could go the other way. Oh my gosh, no. dew point. Now let me clean that up. That was terrible. Dew point. Function. Function. And so these two are very, very closely related. So if you gave me a humidity, I could give you an estimate of the dew point temperature and vice versa. And you'll see this when we start to combine all of these properties, absolute humidity, relative humidity, dew point temperature, and we're going we're gonna to really make a plot of these and we're going to call that the, the psychrometric chart. This relationship will prove itself because these these lines will be all, both horizontal for dew point temperature and for absolute humidity ratio. And I believe this is probably the the concept of psychrometrics that most people have the, the most fundamental understanding of going into it uh, because we see it, we see condensation happen. When you have a cold, you have a can of cold soda, which you shouldn't be drinking, right? But if you were, you could see cold droplets, and that's why you need a coaster. Keep your wood from getting wet. So it's something everyone has experience with, but really this is a more technical definition of that. So in the next video we'll be covering wet bulb temperature, and then eventually we're going to start showing how do we actually calculate all these properties for, for moist air if we want to start doing thermodynamic calculations. So hope to see you in the next video.